There must be 10 on that side, 10 on this side. Every single one boarded up. So welcome back to another video exploring some of the cheapest property for sale at the moment in the United Kingdom. And today's video has brought me to County Durham, to the town of Horden, the seaside town of Horden. The sea is just down there and this is the town of Horden. Now 50, 60 years ago, this town would have looked completely different. Nowadays, there's a lot of boarded up property, a lot of derelict property. And the house price around here is really cheap. You can still get house around here really cheap. So I'm gonna have a wander around today, hopefully speak to some locals, and I've got two property tours, so we'll be able to go inside some of the properties and try to figure out why they're so cheap. So Horden is an ex-mining town. The coal mine here was sunk and opened in 1900 and operated all the way through the 20th century. At one point, the mine boasted 4,000 workers. 4,000 people were working at the coal mine, living here, spending the money, bringing up families. And the mine also held a record for, I think it was the European record for the most tons of coal removed in a single day from a mine. And they held that record for 30 years. So it was, a, it was the real deal, this place. The mine was the real deal, a real powerhouse of industry, this place. Then in 1987, the mine was shut down and all those workers who relied on it had to go elsewhere to find work. So this here is a statue that was put up in 2015 called the Mara. It's named Mara as a recognition of the mining history of this place. And it's a miner who's had his heart removed. He's had his heart taken out. And that's a symbol of, on a grand scale, of all these mining communities around the United Kingdom that were shut down, the industry disappeared, everyone lost their jobs, and ultimately the beating heart was taken out of the place, and that economy just died. But also on a personal level, it's a representation of the human struggles that all these miners went through, these people that had spent their lives down the pit. This was all they knew. This is what they were good at, highly skilled workers, that suddenly their jobs disappeared. And it wasn't like they could go work in other mines. All the mines were shutting down at this time. That industry just disappeared. So the beating heart of these miners was taken away as well. So it says here, dedicated to the coal miners of Horden, toil, dark pit and seam whose fortitude and indomitable spirit fueled the industry of Great Britain. So I come from generation after generation of miners from County Durham, from up here. So this is where my dad was born. And going back before that, his dad were a miner and his dad were a miner. This is where my family would have worked. This is the kind of area my family would have been brought up in and the industry they worked in and the kind of houses they lived in. So I'm really excited to see this history of the place because the history of this place is my history. So that's really cool and I've not been up here before. So I've been keeping my eye out on the, the property prices and there's a fair few on there at the moment on auction, some, some houses for five grand, starting at five grand. They've not been selling for five grand, they've been selling for around that £20,000 mark. So I've had my eyes on a few of them, I'm going to go and try and look at the outside of them. And then I've got some viewings for property as well. I think one's starting at around 15 grand, the auction for one of the, the viewings, and the other one's about 30 grand. But then also online, and it's really strange, there's a whole load of these boarded up ter terraced houses all on auction from the same auction house. And each one is on for £80,000. And now there's no information at all apart from just a picture of the boarded up house. There's no pictures of the inside. I rang up, I said, oh look, I'm going up to Horden, can I, can I arrange a viewing? They said, no, we're not doing viewings for these. So you can't even get a viewing of them. So if you want to buy one of these £80,000 houses, which is boarded up on the outside, you just got to take a punt and, and go for it. As I said, I rang up this auction house. I said, can I arrange a viewing? And this is what they said. It look like we're not doing any viewings on them, I'm afraid. There'll be any, any, more, any more photos or videos or, or even a chance of getting in any. So it'll just be just be auctioning it at what's on there. All right. So yeah, them houses that are on for 80 grand, the ones that you can't even see in just that picture. And as I said, there's loads of them. There's so many of them. It's not people like me who need a house or a family that need a house that's going to buy that. No one's going to take a risk and spend 80 grand on a house that you don't know the inside of, you don't know the condition of. That seems like it's just done for investment opportunities to, to sell to big investment companies or something like that that just don't really care. And look at this here, another symbol of the history of the town. Look at this, one of the old coal mine carts with the coal in it. You can see how proud they are of what built this town. And it doesn't take long before you see the first boarded up window. Let's go have a look. That one might still be lived in to be fair. They might have had the window put through, you never know. Just keep wandering anyway.
to just come down to the end of this street here. There's a boarded up one there. Looks like a boarded up one there. And another one on the end here. So I just got chatting to a nice girl there as well who, was, who lives on the street there and she said that a lot of the houses are just boarded up just because if they've got glass on them the youths go around just smashing them up so just get some stuff over there while they're not selling or wait or while they're waiting to sell sorry right where am I now um let's walk back up this way so I'm just on the back streets of where I was before boarded up on here I like it here, they've made you think it's not boarded up. There's a door handle, they just painted that on. Curtains are drawn, they just painted on. Good way to make you think it's not boarded up, but it is. Another one here with the fake door handles. I love them. You really think it's a door and you really think it's a window until you try and open it. Just paint it on. So yeah, a lot of boarded up property. Another one just down here. Whoever made them fake doors a genius. I absolutely love them. They look so good. And they do make the houses look so much better, the boarded up houses. I actually just walked past this one. Another one here. <laughs> Brilliant. At least Harden's doing a really good job of making the boarded up properties not look like boarded up properties with fake curtains and windows. Well, not all of them actually, but a lot of them. So I was just chatting to a fellow then again who lives on these streets around here and he said, it's the numbered streets that are the really cheap ones. And I think these are the places where I'm viewing two houses. But yeah, he said the numbered streets are the ones where it's super cheap. And apparently there's a plan to knock them down. There's been some plan. They're gonna get rid of them and make the train go through here. Who knows how long they'll be here for, but he did say, he's like, yeah, you can get a house on here for 20 grand. He was like, and it'll be a sturdy house. So there's a film, I think it was ITV or BBC or someone did a film about 10, 15 years ago here where the council were flogging off houses for one pound. So it's been this way for a while, like there's been a lot of boarded up properties and I'm guessing these are the same boarded up properties that we were trying to flog then. The people are super friendly there. Everyone's been really nice so far. Is it a nice area? We didn't invite any brother. Let's just go and do on the bank since the colliery's finished. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're really interested. Did, did you know when it worked in the colliery? Did you self work in it? Aye. Did you? They were better then. Were you? What were it? What? Everybody took pride in what they had and what they were kept out clean. No, they didn't bother. Yeah. What, what were the town like when the colliery were open? Were it a lot busier? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Was it good? Yeah, yeah. You had all the, all the workmen's clubs and all the public houses and, and practically no left, no, you know. When the pits closed, what industry did everyone move to then? Or was it a case of a lot of people moving away? Yeah, some went to the factories with pit lays, some took redundancies. Did it completely change the town though when that shut? Oh, I wait to see it, man. Plus, the last 20 years, uh, the drugs just took hold you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of the younger generation on the drugs now. Yeah. Not just the younger generation, some of the older ones and all. Not yeah. really all late, but the 40s and 50s are still a lot. 
changing times. Aye. What's the beach like around here? Is it nice it's or really is it? Full, aye. Is it? Aye. I'll, I'll be honest, I've lived here a lot of years and I haven't been down there much myself. Yeah. I'll throw you back in a minute and try and okay. What you felt more was the curry. It was a tip of a lot of waste into the sea. There's a curry just down here. Yeah. yeah, and it was all washed up and thrown to shore. It was supposedly only be stone what they were tipping, but it wasn't. It was coal and stone. Oh, really? You had like, lads who, who didn't work, they used to go down with the wagons and fill the, fill the coal, what the tide would bring in. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, hard work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the pitch was hard work, but uh, at least it was a job, you know. Yeah, that's it, yeah, yeah. I've got about 40 years out of it. For 40 years down the pit, you say? Practically, yeah. Wow, but, yeah. Uh, I see how this, this thing's changed, so... Yeah. Anyway, nice, mate. I went to that. I went to see that statue in the park. You know, the oh, one it's beautiful. Tell me, Mara. And, like, for, for the work colleague, she work colleague was called Mara. Oh, is that what it's called, that? Oh, oh right. Oh, amazing. Oh, hey, cheers, Paul. Anyway, nice oh, one. Sure. All the best, yep. Yeah. So I just got chatting to that nice guy there. He said he spent 40 years down the pit, the colliery here in Horden. And he also said that the statue is named Mara is because that's what they used to call each other, Mara. That was the nickname for each other when they were the, in the mines. Really cool. What a nice guy. He said that the town's changed a lot and like drugs have played a big problem into it and just things uh, have completely changed since the, obviously since the mine shut down. But yeah, he also said drugs are everywhere. But when you lose that core industry, that core thing that everyone's doing and the reason they're there for, can affect it even worse, I bet. Right, and here is the first house that we're gonna go have a look inside. It's here, I'll just show you. Right, so this is the listing online for this property. As you can see here, it's on for 40 grand. I'm not sure if it'll go for 40 grand. This is not an auction, by the way. This is just being sold as offers in the region of 40 grand. Now, I've been looking at properties around it and what I've sold recently, so within one mile uh, last year. Got one here, 25 grand in 2022, 28 grand in 2022. No picture on that one, but 30 grand, 32 grand in 2022 let's just have a look at this one so 32 grand in 2022 that looks all right actually that's pretty nice that's done up all right all right so that was 32 grand uh in 2022 so let's go inside this one and have a look around so the first room i went into was the living room and it was a total mess just mess everywhere they said they'd had loads of interest on this place but i just feel if that's true clean it up a little bit but the walls were actually in all right shape just there was so much stuff everywhere glass all over the floor looked like a job had started and then just they hadn't bothered finishing it into the kitchen now and the lights weren't working in here so it's pretty grainy footage the back door also didn't open so i couldn't see out into the garden but yeah in the kitchen there was just like a sink unit in the middle and the walls around here were really really bad in a bad way Again, just loads of like, rubbish on the floor and the wiring's all over the place. I'm guessing this house needs a complete rewire. Back through the living room, there's the boarded window on the other side. And then up the stairs to check out what's up here. These stairs felt really, really weak. I reckon they need to be replaced. Two bed up here. So this is the first bedroom. And yet yeah, again, just a bit of a total mess. The floorboards need completely redoing. Again, the wires are a complete mess. There's just a radiator off and it looks like someone's maybe just been sleeping on a mattress there. Through here to the other bedroom, again, loads of glass on the floor here. This little makeshift bridge to get over the floorboards. Uh, in here, the walls were all right. Again, it was just a floor really, just the floorboards, which is a bit messy, but not too bad to be fair. And then into the bathroom, which was a bit of a tight squeeze because the bath had been pulled off the wall. And yeah, it was just a mess behind that as well. There was a radiator off the wall as well and just stuff everywhere. Behind the bath was really messy as well. But the walls above were all right. And there was just a broken window up here as well. But yeah, that's the house. So yeah, there we have it inside the first house. And that one's on for £39,000. And it's actually all right in there. I mean, it's not actually too messed up. I thought it was going to be... A a lot worse than it was. I mean, it's not in great shape, but it's not in absolutely terrible shape. Um, so yeah, 39,000 pounds. The woman said that they're asking too much for that. She did say they're asking too much for that. She said a house round here on these streets done up to a really high standard and nicely, it's probably gonna go for about 50 grand. So yeah, not 39, but interesting to see anyway. Right, onwards, let's have a bit more of a wander.
But yeah, decent terrace houses, small, sturdy. Got the sea down there as well. The guy was talking about the sea. I really want to get down there. We'll see if we can make it down to the sea if we've got time. Let's have a quick wander around of the properties first, but. Yeah, so on the streets, they look all right. And then you come back and then you can see that a lot more of them boarded up and there's a lot more rubbish. So another bit of history on showing the town here, and it's a pit wheel, which back in the day would have been the thing that raised and lowered the miners down into the shafts. But yeah, those numbered streets I've been walking on, as I said before, the 11th Street, 12th Street, all of them. They do feel kind of spooky. They kind of feel a bit eerie. And I'm sure they're fine if you live there, but like everyone who I spoke to is so friendly around here. Really proud people up here, but yeah. But anyway, let's walk over here. I can see some more boarded up properties up this way. So let's have a look, see what these are like. Nice bit of greenery around here though. Nice church to look at. There's a nice big Aldi as well, which I've just been to to get a coffee. Nice man in front, he had a full thing of shopping, he saw me with just my little coffee. He said, go on pal, you can go in front. That's a good person. Nice people up here, as I said. Right, so I've just come from the numbered streets which were over there, and I thought that was it. But we've just got to 7th Street, which is here. And this looks pretty much completely abandoned. I don't think there's a single property on here that is not boarded up. Fake door, fake door. There must be 10 on that side, 10 on this side. Every single one boarded up. And I think this goes back that way as well. So let's have a quick look. Ooh, what's up there? Just seen someone there as well. Just walk into one of the abandoned properties. Just went up, went in through, went in. And another street here, two down, abandoned property there. Boarded up one there. Boarded up one there. Two here. Fake door, fake door. No window, no window. And again, just the back end of this street here. Abandoned, boarded up, boarded up, boarded up, boarded up. Wow. I'm not exaggerated now, I reckon. I've probably seen abandoned or boarded up 70. I wish I'd counted. I wish I kept count. 
Probably about 70. So many. How would you feel living in a place like this, surrounded by so many boarded up properties? So many. And I thought when it was just over on that side before I passed the church, I thought there's a few, but it's just a small area, but this is a massive area. This is an absolute huge area and there's so many. So how would you find living, living amongst boarded up with about seven of them on every street? How would you deal with that? And here is the second house I've got a viewing for. And yay, yeah, it's got the fake window on it. It's got the fake curtains. So we'll have a look in there as well, see what that's like. So this is the listing online for this property. As you can see here, it's on for £15,000. Now this is an auction, so it probably won't sell for £15,000, but we'll see. So let's have a little look down and let's see. All right, property sale history. 2005, it sold for £43,000. Okay, let's have a look at some nearby sold prices. What we got? 30 grand, 39 grand, 30 grand, 21 grand, 23 grand, 23 grand, 18 grand. Okay, let's have a little look inside then. I mean, all of the houses, once they've done updates, they're just a shame they go in this state. Yeah, yeah, what's the reason for that? Is that a... just, just the kids in the area? Is or, it? Or drugs. Yeah, Most yeah. Probably strip the pipes to get the boilers and that. What's what it says it's on for 15. Well, well, starting price 15. Uh huh. What do they sell for? Like, totally depends. With the state this one's in, um, you could possibly be talking 20, 25. Really? With these, you've got to do them out, yeah, get your tenant straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you do them out, leave them empty for a bit, we'll get brought into, right? Yeah, yeah, and it end up in this state, and then the landlords put them back up for sale. So really, it's the best if it's a local landlord or like yourselves, you can respond quick, you yeah, can do yeah. it up, you can get a tenant in. Yeah, and then yeah. they're, they're a good rental income, but you're talking about most probably 20%. So the guy there just answered the question so well as to why there are so many abandoned boarded up properties in this area. And just talking about landlords in general, how it's far better to have a local one, one with local knowledge, not someone that's just absent-minded who buys the property, can't sell it, tries flogging it on for 80 grand like those ones online. Although he did say, he was like, I don't think those can be on for 80 grand. He said that seems far too high. So back to the house. And as you can see upstairs, again, the walls are just a little bit messy. Now he said there had been a boiler put in here. That's been nicked. So that's an issue there that you're going to face with these houses. So here's the bathroom. Just general mess in the bathroom, really. Again, the walls are a bit messy as well. You kind of look at the bathroom like this, it's really messy and it seems really bad, but I don't know how hard this would actually be to just sort out and make it really nice, clear that mess. I mean, you could do that before the house viewing really, make it a bit nicer, but to be honest, just general mess in there. Then going through back into the other bedroom and you've got some stairs up to an attic room. So it's a huge house, it's really big. Well, not really big, but for 20 grand, you're getting two rooms downstairs, two bedrooms, a bathroom and an attic room. Now you're not gonna find that many places in the country at all for 20 grand. Up here, again, just general mess, rubbish and paintwork a bit all over the place. Some stuff left in here, a bit of glass, but yeah, not too bad at all up here. And then downstairs, there's my door. Honestly, I feel like I'm not saying much in this video, but it's pretty shocking how many properties are boarded up around here. It's way more than I thought it would be. Um, yeah, so I'm just kind of a little bit lost for words, but luckily the camera can just do all the speaking. Something else here, oh, an old convenience store that's shut down. I guess it's only convenient if there are people there to use it. There's not, doesn't really work. Don't know what this was. So 
So yeah, that was pretty crazy. There were so many more boarded up properties than I thought there would be. There really, really were. Especially on them numbered streets. Like that, to be fair, that's kind of the only area I stuck to, that central bit with all them numbered streets. I mean, it's a pretty big area, but I didn't really explore the outer areas of Horden. So I don't know what that's like. I don't know if there's more boarded up properties there or if it gets a bit nice around there. But yeah, certainly in that central bit where all them numbered streets are, crazy. There were streets that were entirely boarded up. But yeah, wow, really, really interesting. The most friendly people up here, really lovely. Everyone I got chatting to was so lovely. Such nice people, good people. Like that guy I got chatting to who said he worked in, in the colliery for, for 40 years. You can see that that had such an effect on people when that shut. You take away that industry, you take away why people are here, and then you don't help them. You don't help them moving forward. You don't give them anything moving forward. Of course the town's gonna suffer a little bit and it's gonna change. That's councils for you, councils are shit. So obviously I couldn't come all the way to a seaside town and not head down to the beach and to see what that's like and finish the film down by the beach, down by the sea. So up there you've got Horden, down here the beach, there the North Sea and somewhere right over there will be Europe in the distance and once when that mine was open and this was a prosperous town, think how many people would be down here on the beach on a sunny day, enjoying themselves. Industry changes, the mine shuts down, jobs go, people have to move away, people can't find work, people don't know what they're doing with their lives. And not that far later, the town now filled with abandoned property, boarded up property. It's so sad to see. County Durham, this is where I come from. This is where my ancestors are from. So sad to see. So it says here by the statue as well. I ain't gonna work on Maggie's farm no more. There were politics aplenty. There were rights and wrongs, speeches, marches and defiant songs. Where the heart of the pit village stood. The mine is long gone, but the spirit stays. We just lace up our boots for different work days and the cold dust remains in our blood. <laughs> 